Let's go. Yeah. We're live? Mm -hmm. Good morning. Good morning, uh, our Redeemers. Welcome to the service this morning. It's kind of uh, a throwback Sunday, I guess you could say. We're, we're here in our familiar location that we were in for quite some time um, during the height of the pandemic. So, uh, why are we here? Why are we doing this? Well, I, I wanted to just um, address that a little bit. I, uh, myself, I haven't been feeling well the past couple of days, and um, not that I think it's COVID, and I haven't been tested for COVID, but I, I truly think it isn't. And also, not that I maybe couldn't power through and, and do the service at church on location today either. I, I think in the past, I probably would have done that. However, uh, it is our recommendation and our, we ask the congregation um, and everybody involved that if you aren't feeling well, that we uh, just recommend that you stay home. And um, so that is the reason I, am, I think it applies to me as well. I, I, I wanted to just, um, just in case, you know, just in case it was something else, I didn't want to um, expose anyone to that. So uh, trying to um, remain consistent on that. So I apologize for the change of plans today and uh, appreciate though your willingness to join us here for the service online. Uh, we, this also might be our last time that we would ever join you from this location even for an online service. Uh, um, many of you may, may know, but maybe not, um, but Sarah and I and the kids are, are going to be moving soon. Uh, uh, don't worry, we're not moving away from the area. We're actually moving closer to Edgerly. We're going to be moving out to uh, the farm where my parents live. So we've been working on a house there for the past year, and uh, we are planning to, we started moving stuff yesterday, but we're planning to be in there and living there, hopefully, within the next uh, few weeks. So we'll see, we'll see if that happens. We're keeping our fingers crossed, but... But nonetheless, uh, like I said, this might be our last time joining you from this particular spot. So it's, it's kind of nice to, to um, memorialize this, this space as we've been here for um, a unique time in our lives and in the life of the church. A couple of quick announcements now before we go. Um, Awana has been essentially canceled, right, for the, for the rest of the year. Um, uh, it was too difficult navigating different um, COVID situations that were occurring and, uh, and the, the general situation. So there will not be a WANA um, for the remainder of this year, just to make a, head, or make a note for that change. Uh, and then a couple of prayer concerns that, I, that we were asked to add here. Um, uh, first of all, uh, the Fuhrers have said that their son Joel has been having some, some health issues lately. And... They are not sure what the diagnosis is yet. There's no clear diagnosis um, or treatment plan. But uh, nonetheless, they've asked that we put him on the prayer concerns, which we certainly will, uh, to be praying for a clear diagnosis and treatment plan going forward for him. So that's for Joel Fuhr. And then also, um, we're, we're going to be adding to the prayer concerns uh, Jayette, who um, also has been having some health concerns and... Uh, from what they understand now, it is some form of cancer. Uh, and so we don't know a lot of details other than that they're hoping to start treatment um, and, um, and also uh, be praying just for a clearer sense of what kind of cancer it is and, and for, for how to best treat it. So we'd be praying for Joel Fuhr and, and, and Jayette as well, Jayette Young. Um, other than that, uh, the prayer concerns you have all those uh, that are going to be listed in the bulletin, which you have online, and uh, we will um, we will we'll end it there. Um, if there. If you have any prayer concerns you would like to add, though, feel feel free to type it in the chat, um, and we can mention it as well. But anyone watching will see it there as well. So, all right, we're going to get started now. However, uh, have we packed away the hymnal? Yes. We have. But I think I have one downstairs. So okay. um, I'm going to run and grab my hymnal. Okay. Uh, just take take one second here. Okay. Can I say hi, Sam? Sure. Hey, 
Hello! My name is Rosa. My name is Rosa. That's enough. <laughs> okay. We'll get started here this morning with a brief order of confession and forgiveness. I can't remember. Oh, will you guys repeat it? We did mention it in the past, but I can. Okay. See, it's like I'm a novice at this again. It's been too long. Page 56. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you, and for his sake God forgives you all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. At this time, um, we'll do the we'll do the opening, Sarah. Okay. The hymn of praise. Okay. Do you want to sing that? Opening? Oh sure. Yeah. Do you want to read this or to read from or have you? Yes, from? please. Okay, so ready? First song is going to be All Creatures of Our God. Oh, praise 
Thank you, Sarah. At this time, we'll, uh, we'll move to the prayer of the day. Uh, you can say it with me uh, if you want online, but uh, it's found in your bulletin. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit your people together in one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment, and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. I will have our reader come forward now. The first reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 25, verses 6 through 9. And the Lord of hosts will prepare a lavish banquet for all people on this mountain, a banquet of aged wine, choice pieces with marrow, and refined aged wine. And on this mountain he will swallow up the covering which is over all people, even the veil which, he, which is stretched over all nations. He will swallow up death for all time, and the Lord God will wipe tears away from all their faces. And he will remove the reproach of his people from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. And it will be said in that day, Behold, this is our God, for whom we have waited, that he might save us. This is the Lord, for whom we have waited. Let us rejoice and be glad in his salvation. Here ends the reading. The psalm this morning is Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's and all it contains, the world and those who dwell in it. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord and who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to falsehood and has not sworn deceitfully. He shall receive a blessing from the Lord and righteousness <coughs> from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of those who seek him, who seek thy face, even Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, and lift them up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Here ends the psalm. Um, our second reading this morning is from the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verses 1 through 6a. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth passed away, and there is no longer any sea. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, made ready as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is among men, and he shall dwell among them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be among them. And he shall wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there shall no longer be any death, and there shall no longer be any mourning or crying or pain. The first things have passed away. And he who sits on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. And he said, Write, for these words are faithful and true. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Here ends the second reading.
gospel reading today comes from John chapter 11. It will be reading verses 32 through 44. Therefore, when Mary came where Jesus was, she saw him and fell at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit, and was troubled, and said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. So the Jews were saying, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man also from dying? So Jesus, again being deeply moved within, came to the tomb. Now it was a cave and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Remove the stone. Martha, the sister of the deceased, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be a stench, for he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not say to you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they removed the stone. Then Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but because of the people standing around, I said it, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. The man who had died came forth, bound hand and foot with wrappings, and his face was wrapped around with a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Do you want to do this? There you go. <laughs> there we go. Feels, feels right now. All right. Um, the message today uh, I've titled Willpower. And not willpower, you'll see, it's a play on words. It's not about willpower as we would think of it. It's more about the power of the word will. And um, we'll get into that here in just a moment. But I want to start um, by sharing just some things I had recently come across in a book I wrote. And, um, Wait, book you read? <laughs> See, I'm not feeling well. <laughs> I'm delusional. Attribution is important. I'm just <laughs> protecting the I'm delusional, thinking I've written books recently. No, I haven't written any books. I have read a book, though. Um, a book I read recently was called Dedicated by Pete Davis. And so I want to reference that a little bit here as, as I get started. But first of all, I want to share an experience that I think is pretty common to everybody. And I want us to kind of think about it as a starting point. How many of you have ever... Uh, we're all busy um, at times, um, but um, of course, we also know that we live in a time where, where we have so many options. Uh, perhaps uh, I, I, this isn't scientifically proven or statistically proven in, in, in any of the research I've done in the past few days, but I would say that there's a good chance that we live in a world now that we have more options than has ever been. Um, and it almost gets increasingly more the case that we have options in life um, about what we want to, how we want to spend our time, what we want to eat, where we want to work, where we want to live, it, it go on down the line. Um, but the experience I want to mention, I want to sort of get us on the same page, is the experience of, of uh, having an open evening some night, or if you have kids, maybe the kids are, are um, staying with grandma and grandpa, and, and you have you have an hour or two of free time that you don't rare, you rarely have, and you think, oh, let's watch something on TV. Um, let's watch a movie. And so you go, and you know, perhaps it's Netflix or, or any number of other 20 or 30 streaming options now. And, and, and you begin to say to yourself, well, let's look through and see what's on. And you start looking, and, and as you start looking, you, you, you start watching certain um, oh, trailers, and you think, no, I wouldn't like that one. So you go and you watch another trailer. And pretty soon, you've been browsing for an hour, trying to simply decide and make a choice on how to spend 
this free evening, and all of a sudden the evening now has become frustrating because you haven't made a decision, you haven't committed to anything, and at the end of it, you just throw up your hands and you say, you know what, I'm going to bed. <laughs> have you had this experience? Yeah. Um, I have. We have. Many times, it seems like. Um, and it, it seems like a metaphor that I wanted to use today to think about the role of, number one, the options we have, um, and also our, our, sometimes our inability to commit. Our inability to commit. And, um, and how we feel that is, I think, a very driving force in our society today. And we're going to contrast that a little bit with what we find in the story of Scripture, what we find in the story of the Gospel, um, and in God's story. Because what we see there is actually something quite different uh, than this world of what, what this Pete Davis, this author, calls the world of infinite browsing. As I was reading our scriptures and hearing them read again here today, um, I was struck um, by the presence of the word will. The word will in each of our passages. And uh, you might say, well, okay, that's, that's interesting, Jordan, but I'm going to read them again, and I want you to just focus on that. And I also want you to think about how often the word will is used in your own daily life anymore. It seems like it's not, a, it's not a very common word. Like to get somebody to commit to doing something or for yourself to commit to doing something or to hear on TV this idea of will. Because will indicates a promise. And we don't want to commit. We don't want to promise. We don't want to force ourselves into any position we can't get out of. We're like liquid. Um, this, uh, this, this author, again, I just uh, he quotes somebody who, who says this time is a time of liquid modernity, saying we never want to commit to any one identity or place or community, so we remain like liquid in a state that can adapt to fit any future shape. And in a world where that's the case, hearing the words of Scripture and the presence of God's promises as indicated by the word will is such a balm. It's such a healing thing. It's such an incredible thing that touches deeply who we are and what we need as human beings. Even not only to know that it is we, we serve and know a God who commits but that he has created us to be people who commit. So let's hear these verses. Now, Isaiah 25, 6 through 9, which we had, we had already heard, it says there, The Lord of hosts will prepare a lavish banquet for all people, a banquet of aged wine, choice pieces of marrow, refined aged wine. And on this mountain he will swallow up the covering, which is over all people even the veil which is stretched over all nations. He will swallow up death for all time. The Lord God will wipe tears away from all faces, and he will remove the repro reproach of his people from all the earth. Now I want you to hear Revelation 21. Revelation 21, 1-6. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth passed away, and there is no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, made ready as a bride. And I heard... A loud voice, Behold, the tabernacle of God is among men, and he will dwell among them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be among them, and he will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will no longer be any death. There will no longer be any mourning or crying or pain, 
the first things have passed away. And then I want to redirect our attention to our story in the gospel again today, which is the story of Lazarus, Martha and Mary's brother who passes away. And what we join in on our reading today is the end of that story. But really at the center of that story are Jesus' words um, earlier when he comes to visit. And he says to, oh, hold on here, I'll, John chapter 11, and then we go, and we started at verse 32, but I want to go back just a couple of verses. In verse 17, this is when Jesus first came, he says, when Jesus came, he found that the tomb had already been, he, that, that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning uh, their brother who had died. Martha, therefore, when she heard that Jesus was coming, went to meet him, but Mary stayed at the house. Martha then said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, so she said this even later again, but in this case she said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Even now I know that whatever you ask, God will give you. Jesus said to her, and this is really at the center of the story, Jesus says, your brother will rise again. And it's on that promise that Jesus gives in the center of that story that the whole story sort of rotates around. So no matter where we're looking at in our scriptures today, I hope as I read it, and I kind of emphasize the word every time I read it, that you heard the presence of this word will. I, I, I was struck by it. And I think that, as I, as I indicated in my introduction, I think that hearing this word is just what we need to hear. To know that God is a God who makes promises, is a God who, who doesn't change with every whim. He doesn't he is the Alpha and the Omega. It's, it's, it, it, we, we hear in our, in our story from Revelation, or in our reading from Revelation. He is the beginning and the end. And what this tells us, what, what Scripture and, and, all, and each of these tells us about God is that He is a God who is not only committed to, He is committed to creation, number one. There, is a, there will be a new heaven and a new earth. He is a God who, who, who being beyond our creation, beyond creation itself, he is not part of creation, became part of it. It's the story of Christmas that we will, we will celebrate of the incarnation. The incarnation is God's ultimate demonstration of his commitment to the created world and created people in that world. That he didn't abandon it, but he came and to be part of it. He committed himself to it. So he's a God who's a God who's created to cre uh, committed to creation and a God who is committed to each of us. You know, I, we, there, there are so many different verses we could go to, to to sort of illustrate this point, but one that comes to mind to me is Philippians 1.6 that, that says, He who began a good work in us will bring it to completion. He who began a good work in us will bring it to creation. So God has begun a good work through the Holy Spirit in all of us. And whatever that work is that he's doing, he's not going to abandon it. No matter the missteps that you take, no matter the, 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 pit, the fall, pitfalls, uh, the holes that you fall into it, it doesn't matter. God has begun a good work in you and he will bring it to creation or he will bring it to fruition. He will bring it to completion. We learn these things about God in scripture and we learn these things through, through the power of the word will. But as I close today, I want to conclude by simply pondering a little bit more of this tension that I mentioned. A tension between our desire for commitment 
and our desire for options, right? Why is there that? I mean, we want options, but deep down we all want to be connected and committed. We all want to feel grounded. We all want to feel stable in that sense. Um, the tension, I think of a, a, an author, Wendell Berry, who speaks a lot about um, commitment. Commitment to a place, particularly. And he says that when you commit to a place or a people or a person, whether that be in marriage or in, in moving to a place, or in putting concrete in the ground and building a house at a place, an experience I feel like we've had here recently, um, it's both exhilarating, but it creates the opportunity for heartbreak. Because... He says it's a whole lot easier to leave than to be left. And if you commit to a place, you can be left. Mm -hmm. And you can be heartbroken in that way. And I think about this in terms of God. A God who creates a world that left him. And yet, he doesn't abandon. And we know, by virtue of the stories that we see in Scripture of Jesus, that he was heartbroken. In fact, in our gospel today, the shortest verse in the Bible, the first verse that anybody can memorize on a moment's notice, Rosa, Jesus wept. The God of all creation, God incarnate Jesus Christ, wept. He was heartbroken. Because he saw the pain of Martha and Mary in experiencing the death of their brother, which is part of the experience of sin, the experience of brokenness in our world as a result of a sinful, broken world that left God. But God didn't leave us. God didn't leave us. God was committed from the very beginning. The Old Testament scriptures are full of this wonderful promises of God. And God has never abandoned those. And so I think that not only do we look at this as a recognition of the beauty of the gospel story, of God not abandoning his creation, not abandoning his created people, but rather remaining even through the heartbreak. But it also can be something that encourages us and gives us the strength to commit to things in our world. Knowing that, yes, when we commit to something and when we make a decision, it means we can't make other decisions. It means that we, are, we remove options. But there is a blessedness in commitment. Um, it was so difficult for us for many years to decide to build a build a house, we, we always thought we maybe wanted to on the farm, and, and I think lying behind that was always the feeling of, well, you know, is this going to work? Are we, are, are we going to be able to, to, to make a living working on the farm as the farm, and, and things like that, and, and there's all these doubts that we have, or do we want, are we going to want to live here forever? Um, you know, going down the line. But when we decided, um, and we started building a house, it almost was like a weight lifted off my shoulder. And there was a blessedness in that commitment we made. Um, and it means that we probably won't live anywhere else, Sarah. Um, I mean, I don't want to predict the future. God, God willing, we can live in our own home, but we won't live anywhere else. We won't be able to pick up and leave. Um, and... I just think there's, there's a blessedness and there's a joy that comes from that. But there also will be heartbreak from that. Uh, opportunities not being able to be taken. Um, leavings that occur. And, um, and that's okay. And so I think that in a world where, where the word will and the promises of will are kind of being filtered out by mites and I coulds, 
or I might, or will seize, um, we're reminded that at the very center of creation is a world of will, um, a world of willpower, the power of the word will, demonstrated through uh, God himself. And um, with that, All right, so we will <coughs> we'll go to hymn of the day. I'm just going to sing a song. Um, it wouldn't feel right if I didn't say this is one of my favorites. <laughs> Turn your eyes upon Jesus. It is one of my favorites, but I, I, also, uh, I also just like the idea of taking some time this morning to turn our eyes upon Jesus. There's a lot, of, uh, there's a lot that we can turn our eyes to, but let's just take some time to turn our eyes toward Jesus. Sarah, I put it in here. It's just loose, though. Go in here. Where is it there? Oh, here it is. Sorry. This is kind of the... the <coughs> the Alan Jackson version. <laughs> this is what it says, at least. Although I don't have a voice like Alan Jackson, so...
time, I'll do the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. God, we come before you today. Uh, we thank you for the beauty of, of your creation, uh, for the sunshine this morning and the warmth we've had recently. Lord, we come before you as well and we, we worship and praise you for being a God who never abandons us, who never forsakes us. Lord, I pray that, um, that your church, that your whole church, would not only receive your promises, would not only know the truth of your commitment to us, but that would reflect that commitment, those promises, uh, to a world longing to hear it, a world that is in flux, a world that is transient, keeping its options open, taking on the form of liquid desiring commitment. We pray that, that you would present yourself, that we as your people would reflect the truth of who you are. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Lord, we pray for the nations today. We, we do ask for continued healing and protection for all nations across this, this world from the effects of the pandemic and the virus. We thank you for the good news of new antiviral medications. Uh, we thank you for uh, the good news of lowering cases. And we pray, Father, that uh, you would bring a, a swift end to this chapter. We pray for, for, for healing and comfort for those who are mourning the loss of loved ones. Lord, we pray for uh, peace throughout the world, in places where conflict is always present and where conflict is threatening. Think of Taiwan and China and South China Sea. And we pray, Father, that, that your peace would prevail. We pray also for our own nation and we, we ask that you would heal what, is, what feels like a broken nation, at times a, a divided nation, that you would got, cause us to uh, see the good in one another despite our our disagreements, uh, that we would find common good and be able to move forward in time and history um, as a people seeking common good and common ground. Lord, in your mercy. For those in need today, Father, we pray, uh, especially for Joel Fear, uh, who has been facing medical complications and, and not knowing exactly what it is, we pray that you would comfort him in that uncertainty, that you would comfort Arden and Sharon and the rest of the family as they, um, as they surround him in, in care and in love. But we pray, Father, for wisdom from the doctors that you would, uh, that you would give them insight to know exactly what's wrong and, and that there would be a treatment available for him. We also pray for Jayette, asking God that you would, uh, that you would comfort her as she faces the faces treatment for, um, for cancer, and Father, whatever fear she has or anxiety, we pray that you would take that from her, that you would give her a peace that only you can give. And Lord, ultimately we pray that you would bring healing to her body. 
Lord, for all the all the other requests and all or all of the other uh, individuals listed, and also for those listening today who have requests that haven't been listed, you know what our needs are, and you know you know what we need, and so we ask that you would meet those at this time, Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. And God, for this church uh, gathered now online today. But nonetheless, still the church, we pray, Father, for your uh, blessing, that your spirit would bind us together and guide us forward. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend, commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Have a great week. Thanks for joining us online today. Bye. Bye.